Hi everyone, welcome back to these processes from the Project Management Body of Knowledge. Now we're looking at the overview for Project Procurement Management. And Project Procurement Management fits closer to the end of our process groups. So we've been through scope, we've defined the scope, the schedule and the cost. And then of course we've based the quality, so what are the deliverables, what quality do they need to meet, what resources do we need um, to, to create this project and create the project deliverables, how, and to communicate to those resources, what sort of steps do we need to take there. And then risk is affected by all of the, the different things, scope, schedule and cost, all of those will have an impact on our risk and overall risk. And now, once we know a lot of these items, then we can see maybe we want uh, someone else or a third party to be doing the work. And so that's when we might uh, hire or form a contract with a third party or, or someone else to do the work for us instead of us having to complete it ourselves. That's when we need to procure their services or products. There are three processes in the, in the project procurement management knowledge area. And we've got planning our procurement management as always, you've been through this with all of the other plans. This is the process for how we are going to manage procurement overall. Then of course we need to conduct the procurements. We need to get you know, third parties involved. Which ones are we going to choose? Now it's time to have them do the work. And of course, once they're doing the work, we need to make sure that everything is on track. So we're controlling those procurements and the work that's being done. There are a lot of inputs, tools and techniques and outputs that you'll see and the project management plan is one of the key documents as always. Expert judgment again is one of our, our key tools and techniques but we'll see extra things like advertising and bidder conferences, data analysis and team skills of course make their appearance as well. Source selection analysis is a, is a new one that you'll see as part of procurement management. And then we'll have things like procurement statement of work. So what are they actually going to be completing? Make or buy decisions. So is it better, is it more cost effective to make uh, than it is to buy the item, especially considering ongoing costs. Independent cost estimates, change requests as well, uh, and source selection criteria that we might have to use. So agreements and selected sellers will also be outputs as part of project procurement management. Key concepts for project procurement management. With procurement management, there can be significant legal obligations and penalties tied to the procurement process. There is almost always a contract involved and that will involve an agreement, but also money. So we're paying someone for their services. The project manager does not have to be a trained expert in procurement management laws and regulations, but should be familiar enough with the procurement process to make intelligent decisions regarding contracts and contractual relationships. So the project manager is typically not authorized to sign legal agreements binding to the organization. This is reserved for those who have the authority to do so. So we're going to be needing that expert judgment from the people in the organization who are able to, to sign and make those agreements and, and contracts in place. Other key concepts we'll see, uh, the process involves agreements that describe the relationship between the two parties, a buyer, so we're buying the services, and they're selling their services to us, so the procurement party. Agreements can be as simple as a purchase of a defined quantity of labor, so maybe we're, we're buying someone for buying someone's hours or time, 15 hours at $100 an hour or whatever it is, um, and then that's going to be X amount of dollars. So uh, that's a specified labor rate, or it could be a multi-layered construction contract where we're delivering multiple deliverables and all of that is, is inbuilt into the contract as well. A contract should clearly state the deliverables and the results that are expected, including any knowledge transfer at the end from the seller to the buyer. Anything that is not in the contract cannot be legally enforced. And when it comes to uh, if people can't agree at the end that something hasn't been delivered when it should have been, then that's when we go into the claims management process. It's a, they make a claim against that contract or against that piece of scope. When working internationally, project managers should keep in mind the effect of culture and local law that might have upon the contracts and their enforceability, no matter how clearly a contract is written. 
Now there are different types of agreements that we will see as well. It, it could be a contract, but it could be a service level agreement. So simply an agreement of, of something that's being provided, just an understanding, or it could be a memorandum of, of agreement there as well, or a purchase order in fact. So it could be a physical purchase order, an invoice that's happening or coming through to us. Most organizations will document or have document policies and procedures existing, specifically uh, defining procurement rules and specifying who has authority to sign those documents and administer such agreements on behalf of the organization. The legally binding nature of a contract means it will be subjected to a more extensive approval process, usually. Uh, and often involving a legal department within the organization. The seller can also be identified as a contractor, maybe a vendor, a service provider, or a supplier, whoever is supplying that information or, or service or product. And a seller can also be viewed during the contract life cycle first as a bidder, they're bidding. Um, so they, they bid, they say it's going to be this amount of dollars. Then as the selected source, so we say, yep, we want to approve that and go ahead. And then they're the contracted supplier or the contracted vendor providing those services to us. The buyer, which is who we're buying those services, may be the owner of the final product. So the, the seller is, giving, is creating that thing and we're going to use it as part of our project. Uh, the buyer might also be a subcontractor contracting out the work. The acquiring organization, a service requester or the purchaser themselves. Trends and emerging practices we'll see in project procurement management include advances in tools, so more online tools for procuring uh, someone else's services, more advanced risk management, so writing risk management into the contract. So if, uh, if this risk happens, then you know, maybe the deal's off or there'll be penalties involved. Changing contracting processes, so there are standard forms and international for international mega projects we really have clear, there might be clear processes or clear documented policies involved for those larger, larger projects. Uh, and logistics and supply chain management, where there are long lead times, we might actually physically go in and look to manage those supply chains ourselves as an organization. Technology and stakeholder relations, so we might be using Skype, Zoom, web cameras, other online technology uh, in order to, to continually manage that relationship between the procured person, the seller and the buyer. And of course, trial engagements. Maybe we're going to trial them for, for two months or two weeks uh, and, and say, you know, this is going well or this is not going well. And that way we can proceed from there. Tailoring considerations we'll have for project procurement management uh, include the complexity of procurement. This might uh, impact the type of procurement or the type of contract that we're going to use, and we'll see more on this later on. And it's also a key concept that we'll see. So the physical location might Im impact things as well. Any regulations or the, the governance around uh, procurement in an organization and the availability. So are they actually available to do the work? Considerations for agile and adaptive environments. In agile environments, specific sellers may be used to extend a team where both the buyer and the seller share the risk and the rewards associated with the project. So now we're working together for the same risk and the same rewards and we all we have everything invested uh, on both sides there. But larger projects might also use an adaptive approach for some deliverables and a waterfall approach for others. For example, um, we might have our scope and cost defined up front like a waterfall uh, approach, for example. And then maybe we're it using iterations to, to improve that over time. But also maybe we've got a third party who is creating something all you know in their own organization and we can't see into it. So that's definitely a waterfall approach there. They're just going to deliver that all in one go. And then we can implement that during one of our iterations, uh, during, one of, during part of our project as well. So this is where we have hybrid approaches and there are many different variations here uh, where we're using increments, delivering features potentially, but also other parts, uh, maybe the seller or the buyer are using a waterfall approach in conjunction with that. You'll see many different ideas there and it, it just comes down to the organization and the project that you're working in. And that is the overview for project procurement management. Thank you.